The Unshackled Waves, episode 152. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Our discovery of new Australian alt media personalities continues, and we are very happy to introduce you to Maddie's Modern Life, which is a YouTube channel that produces both commentary and educational videos on everything from Australian politics, cultural issues, to philosophy and Austrian economics. He also hosts XYZ Live every Monday night on his channel with their editor David Hiscock, and publishes on xyz.net.au. So let's go ahead and get to know the man behind the channel. Maddie, welcome to the show. Hey, mate, how's it going? Uh, good, thanks. Now, uh, your YouTube channel, it's becoming uh, quite popular, Maddie's Modern Life. It's uh, got over a thousand subscribers now. You've hit that uh, milestone. Uh, I'll first start off, why is it called Maddie's Modern Life? It's a really good question. Um, it's actually a really long answer. That I don't know if I could go into the entire the entire details. It's, um, oh, I don't know how I can answer this without going on to a 10 hour essay about it, but it's, it's sort of a play on, um, on past lives and reincarnation whilst using the, you know, sort of using the term, you know, you know, the show Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah. So I thought that it from was Rocco's, based yeah. on that. Yeah. So it's based on that superficially, but it's Maddie's Modern Life. Um, but I set it up that because it's, because I believe in past lives, so it's a that's a, so it's a slightly religious meaning. But no one's ever actually asked me that question, which is interesting. Uh, but yeah, that that's really the reason. I, I could go into the full the full spiel one day, but maybe I'll save it for for the book when I'm uh, when I'm a worldwide superstar. Uh, oh, I'm gonna do it as a, a video on your own channel. Yeah, oh yeah, I could do it like that. Just a matter of taking the time, I guess. I, it's not really a priority. Oh, well, we got the first scoop here on the Unshackled Waves. Yeah, that's it. Now, your channel, it's a, it's a mixture of quite a wide variety of things. You comment on Australian politics, uh, cultural issues, uh, issues with tech and social media, and also touch on uh, philosophy, uh, libertarianism, and uh, free markets. Yeah, that's correct. I basically just talk about whatever I want to talk about, really. Uh, that, that, that's a, a good freedom to have on a, on a channel that you're not confined to one thing. You can just say, well, I want to talk about this and uh, my viewers, they can either like it or just wait for the next video. That, that's correct. And it's also, I, I like to change the styles as well. So sometimes I'll do a video where it's just me talking to a camera. And then as you can see, like sometimes I'll do the more cartoony kind of videos. When I first started, uh, one of my first videos was uh, on Say's Law, where I actually did little animations, much more complicated animations than, than I do now. I also did another one, um, What the Difference Between Men and Women, uh, where, again, there was a little bit more animation. I had to sort of stop doing the really highly animated ones because they take too long. Yeah, uh, video editing, it's my le least favorite thing. That's why I am primarily do articles as opposed to uh, video production. But I would imagine those animations, they're, they're very good, but that would be so time consuming. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. I, I actually enjoy the task. It's just I, I want to be able to get content out quicker. So I found a, a style that I'm happy with that I can make quickly and it's still good content. A lot of it's to do with the writing anyway, I find. So it's how you write it and whether or not the content's engaging. So I, when, like I said, when I first started, uh, I did that video on Say's Law, which is still one of my favorite videos. I really enjoyed making it and when it was finished. Um, but it only took six minutes. It was only six minutes and it was probably about 35 hours worth of raw work. So that's a full work week um, in actual labor. A lot of that was because 
uh, none of the characters and nothing I'd cut out before. So it's a lot of the, I've, I've been able to get a lot of the time down because I've already got a lot of the cut out images and I am more competent on the editing software. But again, it, a lot of it was also, you know, neat keyframes and, um, and, and actually setting up the animation. And it did take a long, long time to make. The, uh, the one that's taken the longest to make was the brief history of money that took probably over 50 hours worth of work. So if you have a look at it, there's a lot of cutouts, a lot of animations and things like that. So I had to do each one of those images independently. So each image is only like, you know, I think 10 seconds is the longest one. I sort of kept it down very, very quick. I mean, some of them are a bit longer maybe, but there's a lot of intricate animations in them. That took a long, long, long time because I had to cut out so much and, and make a whole, lot of, a whole lot of images for that one. So it was really time consuming. I really like the content that I make when I do that. Like, I'm really proud of it. But again, it just takes too long. And because I'm not a full-time YouTuber, I don't have the time to, to to do videos like that. Maybe one day, uh, when I'm when I'm able to do this full-time, I might I might do another project like that. But until then, I think I, I'm going to have to focus on things that are a little bit easier to make. In, in terms of uh, editing and, and things like that. But again, the, the main issue is the writing, uh, the content. Uh, is like the content of the actual video is the most important thing and it's like everything else is a little bit superficial but it all adds it all adds value at the end of the day uh often it's your videos they're uh, they're mainly animation uh so so it's hard to tell are you able to get it all in one go or uh is do, do you have to uh stop and start what's your skill in that regard um well it really depends on the video most videos now that I've been doing recently, when they do have animation, I'll often spend a day writing and researching them. So uh, write them up, find the studies or articles and and, and things like that and, and, and various pictures, um, which are all labeled, uh, all labeled for reuse. I made sure I did that um, so that I'm not violating copyright. Uh, which is really important when you're using uh, images that you find on the internet. So you I make sure they're all labeled for reuse. And I started sourcing H1 and like putting a link in H1. Um, but yeah, so the, I usually spend about a day writing them up and then I'll spend another day editing them. Sometimes I can do a whole one in a day if it's if it's quick. Um, but no, if, if I want to make it good so that I'm happy with it, it, it takes a little bit longer. It's the, the ones that I can do really quickly are just the raw commentary. So when it's like an article where read out the article, say my piece, uh, say what I'm thinking about it, and then uh, and that's it. I can do those pretty quickly. I, I did one or two of those in like the, the, the video about uh, Lydia Thorpe of the Greens. I did that in like five hours, but there's not much additional animation and there's not much many extra images coming into it. It was a lot of it was just me talking, but I mean, it, it's good content, but at the same time, it's, uh, you know, I would have liked it to be a little bit more, uh, I don't know, I, I would have liked it to look a little bit better if I'd had it again, but it would have taken more time again. It's all it's all a trade-off. And uh, you also do uh, live streams. You work with uh, xyz.net.au, their uh, chief editor, uh, David Hiscock. Uh, you do that uh, uh, every week. Uh, so can you talk a bit about uh, how that works? Oh yeah, so um, yeah, it's a funny story. I was one day I was just sort of mucking around on my computer, and uh, I uh, <laughs> I like to I like to smoke weed every now and then because it relaxes me. Uh, that, that's my uh, vice. I don't drink, I don't smoke tobacco, but I do smoke marijuana every now and then. And I was really high, and I've just texted him. I've gone, we need to do X Y Z live, <laughs> and. Uh, we kind of just made that happen. And really, it's just me and him uh, talking about issues of the day. Um, we pick up, we pick topics that were, that happened during the week before. And then we just go and talk about it when we're, uh, we're when we're in the live stream. And we also take, we also take audience questions and things like that. But, you know, three, four topics that happened the, during the week before that we want to talk about. And, uh, th and that's just how we go. It's, it's a very, very simple format. We don't, we don't flash it up or anything. Again, if it, uh, you know, as it as it gets more popular, we might maybe put a bit more effort into it. Maybe uh, maybe do live streams in a studio and things like that. But right now, it's just a matter of uh, of priorities in terms of time consumption. 
Um, and like with, with the live streams, we just pick the topics and we can just set it up. But if we were going to do it with a with a studio or anything like that, it would have to be uh, it would have to take a lot more time. And I mean, there there are things that we could do to maybe make it a little a, the content a little bit more engaging, I guess. But for now, it's just fun to chit chat and and, chat and talk with him. It's actually a lot of fun to make them because it's it's a very uh, you know it, it's just talking about things that we want to talk about. So that makes it a lot easier than than it otherwise would be. Now, XYZ, uh, don't get me wrong, I, I quite enjoy their content, but it is very uh, diverse, literally, in that it covers probably the mainstream right and then the alt-right uh, white nationalists. Um, do, uh, that hasn't you know, bothered you at all? No, not really. Um, I believe in freedom of speech, so everyone's entitled to an opinion. I don't re yeah, there's a few people that I, that I disagree with. Um, I'm going to be writing an article uh, responding to some of the things that there was a, there's, there's been a bit of a debate uh, regarding Jordan Peterson recently on the site where there's been quite some quite uh, fervent disagreement and I've got to make the time to actually write an article in response to that. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't have any issue with people saying things that I disagree with as long as they're not leftists because leftists <laughs> are the uh, are the real enemy. We'll never let a leftist write an article on our site unless it's to completely make fun of them. Um, but I, I, And even then we probably wouldn't even allow it because the leftists have their own sites. They can go and they can go and spew their violence rubbish to uh, to someone else. But I, well, we don't want any, any anything of it. We don't want a bar of it. They're the enemy. So they can uh, they can piss right off. Uh, as for the, the white nationalism stuff, it's like, I mean, I'm I'm not a white nationalist at all, but see, my issue is with the Marxism, and the fact is, like, Marxists are trying to attack white men. So, in, in that regards, it's really important to defend against Marxism and their attacks on white men. And I can see I can see why white nationalists say what they do, and uh, I mean. I th my my issue with them is I don't think that they're right enough in terms not right as in like right wing I mean right as in correct I think I think it needs to be the argument needs to be more nuanced than just it's not just a matter of race there's uh, there's a lot of factors that that go into making the world a better place um, I mean I understand their arguments and they're they're right about some things but again it's, they're not correct enough in my opinion and I will be writing an article about this when I get the chance, when I get the time, it's it's something that I don't want to, uh, I don't want to put out rubbish, especially when it comes to this. I want to make sure it's good content and I want to make sure the arguments are compelling and, or at least not, I don't, I don't want them to, I want them to be good arguments that, that make a good point and are based on evidence rather than, rather than just, you said something wrong and I'm going to say you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, a lot of what I like, I like to base a lot of my videos on evidence and research and, and what is true. And I, obviously I have my opinion based on the evidence and all that kind of thing, but it's important to know what the facts are before you make a decision on how we should uh, act on them. Oh, I certainly look forward to, to reading that. Uh, now, one of the things that you've uh, ranted about quite a bit on your channel is uh, social media censorship and those on the right, with, uh, we're all too uh, familiar with it. I mean, you're on the, the YouTube platform, but you're also on their uh, free speech alternative, which is, how do you pronounce it? Uh, BitChute. Bit, BitChute, yeah. I'm also on DTube as well. I just set up a DTube account, but I haven't uploaded any videos there. BitChute's great because everything gets automatically uploaded. So my my, uh, my content will never be censored, at least, or it won't be censored uh, for now, while BitChute remains a free, free speech platform, and I believe that it will because I think I did an interview with the, with the owner or the guy who founded it, and he seems legit, and he seems committed to the cause of free speech. So he's... Uh, that's good there, but even DTube, like DTube is uncensorable. It's on the blockchain. Once you put it up, it's it's up there forever. So, I mean, I'll be starting to put videos up there as well uh, when I get the chance. I mean, social media censorship really irks me because all censorship irks me. And the, what really pisses me off about social media is that they built their empires based on the idea of free speech and being a platform for everyone. So they told everyone, come and join us. We are a platform for you. 
everyone has their ideas. And the thing about social media is the more people are on it, the higher, the, the more value it has because it's a function of connections. You know, if, if all your friends are on a social media platform, then that's the social media platform you're most likely to use because all your friends are on it. So what social media have done is connect everyone. And then once everyone's connected, they've changed the rules and, and, and started censoring people. So I actually think it's extremely immoral. It's highly unethical and they really should be held to account for it. It should be against the law ultimately um, because it is a free speech issue. I mean, this is me, a liberal libertarian saying that something should be against the law because it is violating the rights of users. And that's, and that's, that's the truth. They, they built their platforms on the basis of being platforms for free speech. They are obliged to remain platforms for free speech. Otherwise, they are guilty of false and misleading conduct, which is against the law in Australia. I don't know if the court would see it my way, but it is against the law in Australia, regardless of their opinion. Maybe that would be a good uh, project uh, if we could all <laughs> pitch in for a class action suit against <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and, and test it in the court. It would be good. Um, also, emailing your local MPs, e emailing communications ministers, kicking up a big stink about it, uh, using alt media, all that kind of thing. I think alt media is actually the future anyway. Facebook's dying because of its censorship. Facebook's not fun anymore. They changed their algorithm to uh, push content that they want you to see rather than the content that you want to see. And it's just boring now. It's just full of rubbish and ads and, and uh Honestly, no one I know actually still uses it. The people who use it, use it as a messenger app. And I'm fairly confident that that's the experience for most people. I deleted it. I, I deleted it uh, last month uh, after the Cambridge Analytica scandal, but I hadn't been using it for three months anyway. I just uh, told everyone on Facebook that I wasn't going to use it anymore. And then after Cambridge came out, I uh, I just deleted it. I thought, you know what, there's no point. And here's the thing, I downloaded all my pictures and, and all that kind of thing, and I made myself a wonderful little photo album, which I value and treasure a lot more than I val ever valued my Facebook account. So uh, Facebook were great for storing pictures over the years. And now that Facebook has done its dash, I have a wonderful photo album for all my memories over those years. And I'll always have that. And, uh, and I don't need Facebook for, to... I don't need Facebook for that anymore because all the pictures are, are gone. I've got them all on my own private server. I can upload them to a, another another private cloud if I wanted to. Um, and yeah, the, they're my pictures. And that's the, that's really the only thing Facebook was ever good for, storing pictures. Um, so I'm glad Facebook's dying. I think Twitter's going to die eventually as well. Again, they're too censored. Now, here's the thing. I, I just made an article and a video about being censored on Twitter. I was suspended permanently for targeted abuse. Um, nothing I actually said would be construed as abuse by a reasonable individual. Uh, I'm sure I was a little bit rude sometimes, but uh, being rude is not abuse, no matter no matter who you are. I mean, a reasonable person would never consider someone being rude or using foul language just on its own as being abuse. I didn't even use bad language, uh, but they uh, they banned me for abuse. But it's all right because I just got a VPN and uh, and set up another account anyway. It's completely anonymous. I'm not going to use it to promote my, my Maddie's One Life anymore. I'm just going to use it to uh, troll lefties and report anytime they abuse me and uh, and do it that way, which is something I would recommend everyone do. Just if you ever see a leftist uh, making abusive comments, just report them immediately because the quicker we can get as many people as possible banned from Twitter – the quicker places like Gab and Mines will actually grow and, and become the place that everyone everyone is. Uh, you sound like a, a, an ex-alcoholic who <laughs> uh, giving up uh, uh, Facebook and and then Twitter are like that. The the problem that I I find is to use the alcohol analogy is I hear so many uh, people complain about Facebook censorship, but they still come back to the the the, the platform. They, they all talk about you know we need to uh, migrate to Minds or Gab.ai. There's a uh, another one uh, MeWe which has been. Uh, promoted to me uh, as well, but unless there's sort of a coordinated m migration to to these sites, it's uh, most of us, uh, and obviously well, you're the exception. You're the noble one here. Uh, we're all still going to be stuck with with Facebook and, and Twitter. I mean, uh, you're you're on uh, Minds and Gab.ai. What's your experience been like? Have have you been able to engage with people? Okay, so there's a couple of things there. First of all, when you say, yeah, people are still on Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of thing, 
And that's exactly what I was talking about before in that they, they get you onto Facebook and they, they hook you on and they hook you onto Twitter and you end up staying there because other people are still there. It's, it's, it's actually, it's really insidious. And they, they basically lock people in and yeah, unless people just leave en masse, then they, they'll, they'll, they'll last for a while. I think Facebook is dying though. People are using Facebook less and less, uh, which is a really, really good thing. Twitter was dying, but then Donald Trump sort of came in and, and revived it. So it would be hilarious if they ever banned him. I hope they ban him and he just goes to, uh, to, to Gab. Now you asked about my experience of Gab and Mines. Mines has been okay. Like I don't, I don't mind Mines. Get engagement is is a little bit low, uh, but there's plenty of activity. There's a lot of really cool content there, like some cool memes. There's this one account that I'm following. Um, actually, I won't I won't mention that because you get to put this on YouTube. <laughs> so it's uh, the uh, he who shall not be named, who was a certain uh, spokesperson after a certain uh, certain. Um, issue in a certain school in uh you'll have to in, tell in, me off air i'll tell you off air but hopefully the uh hopefully the viewers know who i'm talking about there's a parody account of him on mines which is absolutely hilarious so i love i love his memes as for gab gab's great like gab's so funny um gab's completely uncensored and the amount of the amount of stuff that gets said on there that you would just never see on Facebook or on Twitter because it would get banned immediately is 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 hilarious. It's like this is this is my thing. Like I'm big on free speech. So if, if people are gonna go out and say horribly offensive things, um, I think that's hilarious. I, I mean, obviously, obviously, I don't agree with a lot of the things that people are saying that are really offensive because, you know, I have my own views and I have my own morality. Well, there is, I believe there's universal morality, but I have my own principles and things like that. But I still like it when people say really offensive things because I think it's funny and I think it's uh, it's important that people get it out. I, I really do. I think it's important for people to to say stuff that the politically correct overlords would consider extremely offensive and get them, and, and they would try and get people sacked for saying them. I love it. It's not quite as, uh, it's not quite as, as offensive as 4chan, but uh, you know, 4chan's just a whole nother level. I, I, I do like 4chan as well. I, I tend to, I tend to not go there because I just don't have the time. Whenever I, uh, whenever I go to 4chan, I end up just, I'll, I'll be there for, you know, four or five hours just reading and, and commenting. And it's like, all right, I can't do this. <laughs> this, this is, uh, this is just a little bit, uh, a little bit too time consuming. <laughs> so I'm just like, all right, I, I won't use 4chan because it's too much fun and, and, it, and it's taking up too much time. It's not productive enough. Um, uh, but yeah, things like Gab, Minds, Twitter, where it's, uh, you know, I'm not using Twitter as much, obviously, even though I've got the new account. I'm on Gab a lot more, um, and obviously, also YouTube is my my main my main social media presence. A lot of the censorship on YouTube these days is algorithmic, when that they uh, they they promote the they promote sort of more mainstream corporate channels and the YouTube approved you know priority creators and all that kind of thing over independent creators yeah, doing makeup fact, demonstrations. Yeah, I guess things like that. I think it's more along the lines of, you know, if you are a political commenter or comment commentator, I believe the word is, um, then they will promote the mainstream media over you. It's not so bad for Australians about this kind of thing. I find that when I do Australian content, it does it does quite a bit better um, because the mainstream media in Australia is, is really not on YouTube. So it, it's really not on YouTube all that much. Um, I actually um, I met with an individual from the mainstream media. I won't I won't mention his name, but uh, sort of you know I, I sort of discussed the I tried to discuss social media and YouTube with him, and he said, "Oh, look, we just sort of went away from that," which is which is all right. I mean that that's fine. They don't want to they don't want to enter that space. It's actually great for us. Um, it's it's great for Australian for Australian YouTubers, but at the same time we. If we're, if we're on the conservative side, it's it's really it's a really interesting dynamic in Australia in that our cable news channel is conservative slash libertarian, so it's actually saying things that people want to hear. It's actually talking talking about things that people want to talk about, unlike in America where the cable news is just left wing propaganda. So I think uh, and it's Sky News as well, which is basically far left in uh, in England, which I think well, they're actually the legally obliged to be that. They're league wise that. 
uh, because they're broadcasting a regulator, I think it's called uh, Oxcom, uh, they yeah. they require uh, broadcasters to be balanced. And obviously balanced means left wing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Just like at the ABC. But I mean, the Sky News has been doing pretty well. And that, I mean, the fact that they're not on YouTube makes it a little bit easier for Australian YouTubers. But also because, um, because YouTube is really a place for especially people of, of uh, the liberal, the classical liberal, libertarian, um, a bit of conservative in their free thinking, you know, people who are free thinking individuals tend to tend to flock to YouTube because it's a great outlet. Um, it makes it a, it makes it a bit harder when uh, people are, are getting actually good discussions and good ideas on a place like Sky News. So it, it does make it, it does make our lives a little bit harder, I believe. But again, not many people in Australia have cable. So, and, and uh, so I don't, uh, it's not, it's, I don't know, it's much of a muchness at the end of the day. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm crapping on about this uh, this one issue, but it is it is an important issue. And we should actually be, feel, we are actually lucky that we have a, uh, a what you would maybe consider a mainstream, sort of not quite mainstream, because like I said, not many people in Australia have, have cable, but it is like semi-mainstream news channel in Australia that is actually on uh does actually talk about important issues and isn't um, shilling for for marxist uh for one of the better word scumbags oh you've described probably one of the the gems uh, we've got in australia in sky news but the rest of it the the abc uh, Ch channel nine the the fairfax press and then of course there's the guardian buzzfeed huff post uh uh, junkie, my favourite. Uh, we're we're still up against it uh, in in Australia, and that well, there's there's certain places Sky News won't go, when there's certain places where News Corp uh, won't go either, and so that's why you and me are doing what we're doing because we're trying to get the the alternate uh, view forward, uh, and not be afraid of or you know there's some twitter mob will come after us or uh you know we'll be censored by the the media council <laughs> yeah yeah look you make a really good point and i'm i mean i don't want to over i don't want to overstate the the influence of sky news or not maybe that's not quite the right word i don't want to overstate um how powerful i guess it's the same kind of word i i, I it's on the tip of my tongue, the description, like, I mean, Sky News do have influence and they are attracting an audience, obviously. But yeah, you're totally right. There are lots of other left wing left wing voices. But here's the thing, like the ABC ratings aren't aren't very good and everybody hates Waleed Ali. So, yeah, look, the, the other the other mainstream news channels are definitely left wing in terms of when they're talking about politics. This is ABC and Channel 10 and SBS. And then you've got your other, you know, you thing like BuzzFeed, which is failing, and, and all these other left-wing sites. Uh, you do have them. I mean, Channel 9 and Channel 7 tend to be more advertorial. Uh, they don't really delve into the uh, the political commentary realm. Um, and, I mean, they do. They, they are talking about things like African gang violence, and they, they do sort of highlight that. So, I mean, they, they aren't all too bad in that regards but again my problem with channel 7 and channel 9 is that they'll do a current affairs show where they compare you know who's the best uh, baked beans in, in the country and it's like we these put ones are leading five brands and, to the test yeah we put leading brands to the test and it's like come on mate, come on guys this is sponsored content you know it's sponsored content i don't care if you're doing it for free i mean you're probably taking ads down the track or something like that it's almost certainly sponsored content. Obviously, I'm not an insider, so I don't know. I don't know 100. percent But it's if it looks like sponsored content and sounds like sponsored content, you can you can be pretty sure it's sponsored content. Uh, I doubt anyway. If many corporations will be approaching us to do advertorials. <laughs> I'd uh, I'd probably tell them no. To be to be perfectly honest with you. Well, that, well that's a that, that's another thing about Australia is that uh, you know the the corporations the the big evil you know corporates they're uh, they're they're probably one of the the leading like left wing organisations in Australia because they're like virtue signal on issues such as you know same sex marriage and uh, indigenous issues they're all about uh, uh, diversity it's it's almost if they're uh, trying to 
it proved to the left who hate them anyway that oh we're not the evil corporate raiders or you know we're you know we love all the same stuff that you do yeah it's 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 a phenomenon we see all around the world and corporations or businesses really need to be waking up to it because they're hurting their they're actually hurting their brand i mean i know Qantas Qantas came out like this ceo of alan joyce just loves the virtue single on gay marriage and he you know i did a recent video on his ralph Fuller album where i called alan joyce out for his blatant hypocrisy i mean if he's going to be talking about you know coming down on a rugby player for expressing his views you know, his christian views on christianity and then partnering with the emirates i mean that that is ridiculous level of of hypocrisy um Qantas also have what is essentially a protected monopoly as well so they really shouldn't be entering the realm of politics at all i think it's extremely unethical and they should be basically told by the public to shut up and get make sure the planes are on time and uh and comfortable for other companies it's like that they think they only do it because they think it will make them money that's the reason they're not they're not doing it as some sort of you know as some sort of you know from the heart we want to influence the world and change the world and make it a better place that's that's not true at all they're doing it for money now a, bit, a really good example it's not australian but it's the recent seattle not seattle the recent starbucks uh, issue where they came out after that they, they they lawfully ejected two individuals from their premises for who weren't buying anything and then because of a twitter mob and a left-wing rage mob they ended up making the biggest mistake you can do and that's apologizing never ever 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 apologize to a twitter rage mob never do it whether it's a left-wing one or a right-wing one if you've done something and you're not in the wrong do not apologize and in fact double down so what what uh, starbucks should have done is just turn around and said we reserve the right to kick anyone out of our store for any reason go away and they would have won major respect but instead they just look like they just look like fools i mean starbucks who who has any respect for starbucks now the left certainly don't have respect for them they just bullied them into submission the the you know non-leftists don't have any respect for them because they got bullied into submission and they cowed down to a rage bomb so no you, you don't ever don't ever apologize and you even think it was this other girl um where he who who he who shall not be named sort of called on sponsors to pull ads from uh from fox on i think it was laura laura ingram i think it was her name and so he got all these these sponsors to pull ads and then she came back and her ratings were like double what they were before so people hate it people don't like pc rage mobs people are sick to death of being told what to think they're absolutely sick to death of pc moral policing so it's really you know if, if it ever happens you just you do not give in and this is what businesses need to realize they've got to drop the pc rubbish because it's actually hurting their brand a lot more more than it's helping like if i see if i see a a, a brand or a company pushing left-wing rubbish pc rubbish i if I, I avoid it as as best i can unfortunately there are certain brands that i can't avoid i love footy in the afl love pushing pc crap yeah um, same uh, which is which is unfortunate it, it's annoying and i and i would imagine that i'm probably in the majority of, of of football fans to say that but they push it anyway and the thing is they don't get hurt by it because there's no competition so it's like well they uh you know you just tolerate it and and you go to the footy and you watch your game uh but yeah i think a lot of, if there is competition i think it actually hurts people's brands or hurts businesses brands and they should uh they should probably stop and also get rid of any hr department because they're uh socialist cancer uh, i'd love it if a, a corporation in response to a social justice lynch mob just said to them like screw you and shove it and you know how much respect they get they probably you know, they probably double their sales almost overnight all right maybe it's not that optimistic or maybe it's not that that good but if they did that and it was public and they shamelessly turned around and said we will not bow to a rage mob i i would you can bet your bottom dollar most people would look at that and say full respect we're more likely to use you now it's probably it's funny because it's that's actually the best kind of advertising because people again they're sick of the twitter mob they're sick of left-wing rage mobs these are a very vocal minority who are essentially bullying people into submission and it's time that we stopped being bullied 
I've actually got a video. I think I might release it. I might um, release it this week. It's how to stand up to bullies. So how to prevent bullying. I, I've had it sitting there for a while, um, just waiting for a time to release it. So I might release it later this week. It doesn't talk about social justice. It's more about like actual one-on-one -on -one bullying. But the, the rules all apply. And the way to stop bullying is to stand up to bullies. Bullies will never respect you if you back down. Just stand up to them, take your licks, and then you get up and you brush yourself off and you and you move on stronger than you were before. Definitely good advice. Uh, but of course, the the people that uh, make the the big decisions are our our politicians. We've got a somewhat conservative government in at the moment, and it, it sort of seems like they're just holding the fort on issues such as uh, immigration, energy policy, uh, tax. I mean, they could, they could be doing a lot better in in those key areas. But of course, the alternative, uh, Bill Shorten and Labor, uh, they're a hell of a lot worse, and it's pretty scary that they're in the box seat to win the next election. Yeah, look, the, the recent news poll has them 51-49. I don't know. That could be... That's within the margin of error. We don't... The problem is we actually don't have a, a, a conservative government in place. The three big issues that people want to talk about are immigration, power prices, and uh, tax and paying down the debt. So that these are the three issues that Australians want to talk about most. And we have a so-called conservative government that just basically refuses to talk about two of them. And one of them is just umming and ahhing. So Malcolm Turnbull is a, he's not a conservative. He's not even an old school liberal. He's not, he's just, he's Which not liberal at all. party would make me prime minister first? Yeah, that's exactly right. He's a rich bloke who just wanted to become prime minister and he doesn't, I mean, he believes in all this green rubbish, like this environmentalist rubbish. I mean, this, it's, it's been proven wrong. It's There's no evidence to back it up. All we've done to push, all, all we've done in order to solve the problem is pay massive amounts of money for windmills and mirrors. And it's pushed prices up. It's made power less reliable. And, you know, we, we, our current power plants are, you know, they're not... <laughs> They're mortal power plants. You have to build new ones or you have to upgrade them and maintain them and all that kind of thing. So the fact that uh, this green nonsense is stopping us from building new power is a big, it's a big issue for Australians and the so-called conservative government isn't even tackling them. And, it's for, and immigration as well. Malcolm Turnbull believes in a big Australia. He believes in the high immigration. I mean, at least Tony Abbott is coming out and saying, no, we need to stop it. So I think... Um, I think in terms of the um, in terms of the election, I mean, yeah, look, Bill Shorten and is is a is basically a radical socialist. He's a union man, and I think he has small man syndrome. And the ALP are beholden to green preferences anyway, which I think, I mean, they need to just realise that the Greens are always going to preference them, so they should just tell them to shove off. Because it's ultimately it's going to hurt them eventually. Well, I hope it does anyway. Um, the biggest problem we have is the fact that the Liberal Party are basically betraying their base by by ignoring these issues. And this is the reason that One Nation is doing so well. It's also the reason One Nation did well in the nineties. Um, John Howard took the vote back by actually adopting One Nation policies, but Malcolm Turnbull won't do it. So I could I could see One Nation doing really well at the next election. Um, they. They've underperformed in recent state elections, which is which is a bit unfortunate, but they're polling at about 8% now. And if they really bang on about immigration and power prices, uh, there's a good chance that that could rise. And uh, hopefully, even if we have a Bill Shorten uh, parliament, then someone like One Nation and, and the minor parties will still hold the balance of power. So that, that will keep them in check. That's another thing that we, that's good about the Australian system and that we have the Senate that, can, that does hold the government to account um in recent times the senate's been a little bit too left-wing for my liking um i mean pauline hansen's economic policies are tend to be a little bit more, too big government for me anyway but she's still at least she's talking second time round yeah she's been better second time round and she sort of supported tax cuts i think yeah Malcolm, penalty Malcolm, rate uh, cuts as well yeah, all that kind of thing. Exactly. I mean, Malcolm Roberts is a bit of a funny daddy, but I I think I, I kind of like him because he's yeah. a bit corny. He's a bit corny and a bit silly, and uh, and the left absolutely hate him. So if the left hate him, then he's probably doing something right. Um, 
That being said, I, I'd much rather see a party like, I mean, I, I always vote for the Liberal Democratic Party, the LDP, that's Senator David Lionhelm. He, he's my, he's probably the only politician that I have a, a generally favourable opinion of, like overall, on uh, on pretty much every, on pretty much every policy. Um, and then uh, there's other parties like the Australian Liberty Alliance that uh, I, I gave them preferences in the last election in the Senate as well, and and a few others. But I, I don't even vote for the major parties. I don't even vote in the lower house unless there's someone a minor party that I actually want to vote for. I just throw it out because I figure, you know what, <laughs> they're all the same party anyway. Now, as we mentioned at the beginning, you make uh, videos on uh, free markets and libertarian issues. And I, I come from a libertarian uh, background myself. I, I read uh, Mises, Rothbard, I ran, but uh, it's in this, because we are in a, in a cultural battle at the moment. I mean, we're constantly beating back the, back the left on whether it's, you know, Australia Day or all this agenda bending uh, stuff. Uh, it's, it sort of seems like we're, we're focusing less on the the, the libertarian philosophy and just in the in the day-to-day -day, uh, trenches um so I'm not uh, quite understanding your question oh it's uh, do you still feel that uh, liberty philosophy is important oh of course it's the most important thing uh, liberty like true freedom is true individual freedom and individual rights ordained on us by god this is this is the meaning this is how we find meaning and this is i believe the meaning of the universe this is the whole point of everything to find our own our own personal meaning our own personal relationship with god and and grow in that manner and that means uh and that means not uh, not committing violence against your fellow human being, and this is the problem right now because we're because liberty is so under assault by these radical Marxists. No matter what they, they you know they might call themselves socialists or unionists or whatever. I mean the unions are basically infiltrated by Marxists now, um, or Greens, I should say. It doesn't matter. Feminists, you know, all the names. They're all the same thing. They're all the same brand of. Of, of Marxism, they're all the same brand of, uh, you know, we want to be on top, we want to we want to be the big bullies on top, ultimately that's all it is, it's just a power thing, all they really want to do is is oppress people and stay on top, but, but they mask it in rhetoric of of we're here to help you out, I mean there has been no, no nation has ever implemented Marxist, uh, Marxist uh, ideas and ever been better off as a result, I mean you look at things like, I mean I'm going to, you look at the socialists like uh like uh what's his face you know that that one that we all hate heaps adolf he uh he, everyone in the 30s was saying oh wow what an economic miracle adolf hitler's socialism was but really all it was was just increasing people like just getting people into the workforce uh, the biggest problem in germany was that you know the third of the population were uh were unemployed not doing anything so the the economic miracle of uh, of of national socialism is the same as the economic miracle in any socialist nation and that is basically just labor utilization and this is the problem this is the thing about uh china as well this is why china's grown so much is because they have a billion people and they are now uh, utilizing an additional 200 million 200 million of them in uh in in actually productive jobs rather than being peasant farmers so a lot of the growth in china is as a result of that yeah they've freed the markets up a little bit um which is which is good and has seen uh seen rising li living standards for a large number of people but again they're still not a free society and in order to be a truly wealthy society you need to be a free society there's a lot of corruption in china and i don't believe that a lot of the economic data is 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 factual i think there's a lot of propaganda coming out of there um that uh, the party kind of doesn't want you to know about that being said the uh, the new guy I mean, the new the new guy in Thailand was it Hu Jintao, the dictator for life, has been sending out China propaganda about free markets and sort of talking about how great Taiwan is. So he um, he at least on on the surface understands the value of free market capitalism, but I, I doubt he'd uh, ever relinquish his power if he was asked. I mean, he is a dictator for life now. 
It, it definitely saddens me that free markets, they now seem to be falling out of, out of favor. Uh, I mean, uh, I like mentioned uh, Tony Abbott before, like I didn't like the fact that you know, a conservative was proposing nationalizing a, a power power station. And you know, we've also seen over in uh, the UK, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, the, the socialist who was considered uh, unelectable, is now in the box seat to become the UK's next prime minister. Uh, Bernie Sanders, if um, if if Hillary Clinton didn't uh, rig the primaries and the rest of the Democratic Party, he would have been the, the nominee and uh, probably uh, would have been uh, president. It seems that there's this turn away from uh, free, free markets and that, you know, we need to uh, redistribute. And I think it's a consequence of, of basically the, the, the fact that we've gotten so rich and the wealthy that a lot of people, and especially millennials, say, well, what do we do? now and it's like oh we well we've got to you know care about uh, all these people and the way to do that is redistributing and there'll be absolutely no consequences to that yeah it's it's worrying it, it is worrying and it's important to never never s stop pushing the benefit of free market capitalism uh, a lot of the problem is that the old school conservatives have ceded so much ground and Marxists have infected schools and they've infected universities, um, which is great. This is what's good about the Internet. So people are sort of waking up to it on the Internet. And uh, there are there are a few new sort of left wing left wing YouTubers that have been getting a little bit popular recently uh, with because leftists, you know, they, they want. Yeah, they, they, they still want content that they think agrees with them. I mean, you mentioned a couple of things. Jeremy Corden, I don't, I don't believe he's in the box seat to win the next, the, to win the election. I think the, the, uh, I think the Conservatives are still ahead. Um, and I believe if they, if it was bad enough, Theresa May should just get, she'll probably get knifed. I would, I would hope that she, uh, I would hope that she, that, that her party sort of turn around and say, no, nah, you, you can't be prime minister anymore. And uh, they put someone in who was actually a Brexiter and a conservative and if they did that they'd likely win um i disagree that bernie sanders would have won the election i don't think he would have i think donald trump would have won the election regardless so yeah look it, it it's good that the democrats sort of uh did that to him because it's really made the democratic party look stupid um a lot of Bernie supporters have gone over to the democratic socialists over there and there is you know there's a lot of uh a lot of young people who seem to think that socialism is a good idea and again this is because they've been lied to by marxist professors they've basically been brainwashed into thinking that socialism is good uh, it's important to tell people that it's not and to remind people about places like venezuela um places like uh china well i mean china's more capitalist like china remind them about china in the fact that you know when they put in more capitalism it, it got a lot better that venice venezuela is a really good one zimbabwe is another good one south africa is destroying itself with communism that's probably going to collapse soon so it's really important to remind people that socialism is bad and at the end of the day people need jobs people need jobs and jobs are really really, really important and this is why donald trump will likely win in 2020 because he lower taxes he cut regulations and now businesses are investing in america again and people are going back to work um there are a lot of people in australia who are underemployed and this is because of market regulation of industrial relations it's because of government regulation it's a very big risk for companies to hire workers taxes are too high there's too many regulations and it's important that we actually deregulate and show this to people and uh, get people back in work back back into full-time work and uh, if the liberals actually had the the nerve to for a fight which they don't under malcolm turnbull because he's afraid of losing which is why he'll never truly win um then we're not going to get this and it saddens me to say but it's almost we almost need to have a disastrous another disastrous left-wing government for people to wake up and realize just how how bad they are and and how and how dangerous they are they you know you'll lose your you'll lose your job you know debt will go through the roof something that's happened to australia i mean australia hasn't had a major recession for ages a lot of that is because of uh is because of mass immigration so it's really hiding the fact that we are in a, a tr an actual recession right now gdp per capita is not growing it's not beating inflation so it's um 
So we're not actually, the economy looks like it's growing on GDP, but GDP per capita, because because it's actually going down in real terms, it is a, it is technically a, a recession, if you ask, in my, in my humble opinion. So, I mean, there are a lot of people that are worried about that, which is why, um, which is why immigration is such a major issue, which is why debt's such a major issue, and uh, power prices is such a major issue because they're hurting people's living standards. I mean, socialism, socialism sounds great to young people. You know, if you're not a socialist at 20, you don't have a heart. If you're still a socialist at 40, you don't have a brain. Um, but I don't. Uh, I, I I still think that we can uh, we can stem that that tied just with reason and evidence and compelling arguments. You have to win hearts and minds. So you can't just win minds. This is this is part of my channel. This is why I like to use humor and and fun cartoons and all that kind of thing, because I find it's a little bit more engaging uh, than than just uh, ranting. I'm not I'm not the best of ranters. Um, I'm not as good as someone like Sticks Hexenhammer who can just talk about a topic so done clearly and concisely. Tonight. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I've, I've I've had a bit of practice recently. I think definitely uh, rolling blackouts uh, during summer, uh, the, all, all of our essential services grinding to a halt because of uh, union strikes and yeah, like boats flooding into Australia, that would probably definitely cure a lot of the, the leftism uh, here. It, it's, like, it's like a cycle. Things have to get bad for you to appreciate what makes things good. Yeah, I mean, it's happened before. In yeah, the the unions basically took over, and the left uh, really pushed their thing. And yeah, thing the the economy was was quite bad, I believe, especially in the nineteen seventies, uh, before my time. Uh, a big issue we have now is because society is multicultural. Uh, that uh, yeah, because society is multicultural, there will be a lot more division, and it could potentially create a lot of social unrest. I mean, look what happens. I don't know if you're in Melbourne, but. Yeah, Melbourne. Yeah, yeah you're in oh, Melbourne. I've got Melbourne in the background. Oh, you do too. Yeah, sorry, I didn't realise. <laughs> um, so you'll notice, like we've got uh, we got Dan Andrews in charge, who's just basically refused to do anything meaningful about about African gangs. I mean, yeah, they set up an African crime squad very reluctantly, I might add, uh, in order to do something about it, but it hasn't quite worked because the problem isn't. Um, just policing the crime it's the fact that they're even here in the first place and we're not kicking them out uh, at the first sign of trouble they shouldn't have even been here uh, these people won't ever integrate well most of them won't so there, there might be a few that 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 manage but uh but i can't see the vast majority of them them integrating fully into australian society um and we've also got i mean there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people from a variety of different of different backgrounds and different cultural beliefs coming into Australia who do not share our values. They don't share our values. They don't share our history, uh, and and a severe economic downturn could create some proper proper social issues and proper 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 problems that uh, we may not be we may not be ready to deal with because multiculturalism is very is is not good. I mean, we've been sold this uh, this Kool Aid of multiculturalism for ages. Even John Howard pushed it on us, much to his detriment. I mean, Australia should we should never have bought the lie that multiculturalism is a good idea because it's not. I mean, I I'm I'm not worried about other ethnicities, but you have to realise that Australia is a country founded on British values by British people. It's an English speaking country, and that is the culture of Australia. And if you don't like it, you don't have to live here and you can move away. But if you do want to fully integrate and if you do want to become fully Australian, then by all means, you just have to 100% commit to the nation and to fully Australian values. Because I mean, that that that's a big thing. Like multi multiple ethnicities, all right, this is, this is a big issue that I have with white nationalists in that I don't see the value in excluding someone because of the color of their skin. Like if someone, looks like if someone not looks like me if someone thinks like me acts like me and talks like me i don't see any reason in excluding them from uh from society uh that being said you are a lot more likely to have people who believe in the values that i believe if they do come from a european background it's just the way it is it's just basic genetics and, and uh long-standing cultural it's a long-standing cultural fact but that being said so this is why this is why uh 
a Bill Shorten government would be is, is such a threat because of that underlying uh, the, the potential uh, the potential ethnic tensions. Like we don't want to be balkanizing our own nation, which is why and multiculturalism is, is very likely to do that. So, I mean, it's really important to to talk about the values of liberty, talk about the values of freedom of speech. And, and, and encourage people to join Australian society and completely call out anyone who pushes left-wing rhetoric, uh, no matter how nice nice it sounds. I think that's a good note to end on. We've covered a lot of uh, ground tonight, uh, Maddie. So uh, thanks for, for coming on and having a chat with me. It took a while for us to uh, coordinate it, but uh, uh, let's keep in, keep in contact. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me on. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. I would like to encourage all of you to subscribe to Maddie's YouTube channel, watch XYZ Live every Monday, and also visit xyz.net.au on a regular basis, as well as the Unshackled, of course. There are some big upcoming events in Melbourne, which I'd encourage all of you to attend. First is there is the No Snowflakes Pub Night, hosted by RV Yemeni and Sydney Watson. It is on Friday the 1st of June at 7pm and will be held in the South Yarra area. Tickets are free and can be booked via Eventbrite. The True Blue Cruise annual Aussie Pride Flag March is nearly upon us. It was one of the first events we covered out in the field in Melbourne last year, and we'll be back again there this year. The date is Sunday the 24th of June at 12pm and begins at the Royal Exhibition Building. The Campaign Against Racism and Fascism will be there to counter-protest, so we will also witness the feral left in action. Diane Colbert from the All Nations Christian Mental Health Association, who was a speaker at the Rally Against Safe Schools that we uh, covered, is speaking at the Family Values Alliance in Ballarat. Uh, their event is titled LGBTIQ Myths and Facts. It's on Friday uh, 25th of May at 7pm at The Shed at Sebastopol in Ballarat. Also, don't forget, if you want to take The Unshackled even further and score some awesome rewards, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash theunshackled. Don't forget, we also have our online store, Upright Market, where you can purchase Unshackled merchandise and other gear for right-thinking people. So thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.